Hello and welcome to Beyond Business. This is the show where we look at the latest trends in the global economy. In this program, we're looking at whether international aid should come with strings attached. If you donate to a good cause, should you get a say on what your money's spent on? The European Union and the United States are the world's biggest donors, but their approaches to giving are very different. The United States often pushes for its aid contributions to be spent on American products. It's called Tide Aid. You might argue it's good business sense, an effective way to ensure that aid programs benefit both recipient and donor countries. But there's also criticism of the American approach, and European Union members don't tend to make the same connection between aid and trade. Let's take a closer look in this report. In Mopti, boats prepared to navigate up the Niger River, headed for Timbuktu. On board, food provided by the World Food Programme, the WFP for short. It takes two days to travel the 500 kilometers between Mopti and the city of 333 saints. Those hit hardest by the conflict are found in Timbuktu. Many people there are living in extreme poverty. One out of five households are faced with severe food shortages in northern Mali. More than 125,000 people in that region received aid from the WFP in March 2013, in addition to 150,000 displaced Malians in other parts of the country. Food assistance in kind. When food is available and the issue is purchasing power, it can cost less to give money to these people so that they can buy produce. Uh, de donner de l'argent uh, à ces gens-là pour qu'ils puissent acheter, mais de l'autre côté, ça peut aussi This can avoir also have positive uh, impacts on the market's development. Uh, sur le développement du marché. In addition to developing the local economy, distributing vouchers helps reduce transport costs and avoid storing food in warehouses that don't respect certain norms. In this refugee camp in northern Iraq, Syrian families get their supplies directly from shopkeepers that have accepted the monetary transfer system, a system put in place in 2012, but that remains marginal. Food vouchers and money transfers only represent 7% of the total volume of the WFP's food aid. That's $360 million a year. Food distribution is still the UN agency's main activity. In 2012, WFP purchased 2.1 million metric tons of food, valued at 1.1 billion US dollars. Um, that is 65% of the food that we delivered to, to our operations. The other 35% were received in kind. With more than $1 billion a year, the WFP often prefers to supply itself locally. Over two-thirds of the 2.1 million tons of food the WFP bought in 2012 came from developing nations. The bidding process includes a strict set of rules. We compare a price of a commodity, like a, a cereal, in, in, in the international market with the cost it, it, it needs to bring it to the country where we require it. And we compare that with what we would pay in the local market. Whatever is cheaper, this is what we will go for because it gives us more food for the people we want to help and we need to help. The WFP's list of suppliers remains secret and it's impossible to find out which donors give in cash and which ones give in kind. Transparency has its limits, even in the humanitarian world. We do not track per donor how much they give in cash or, or, or in kind. Around 100 countries donate to the WFP every year. In the lead, the United States, the European Union, and WFP members Japan, Canada, and Australia. We have received uh, last year almost 4 billion US dollars in contributions from those donors, uh, uh, our top 10 donors, of which I mentioned just some right now, actually contribute about 80% of this 4 billion US dollars. The U.S. is the biggest donor. It also provides the most aid in kind. Washington keeps a close eye on the WFP as the last four directors of the U.N. agency had been U.S. nationals. Catherine Bertini in 1992, James Morris in 2002, Josette Sheeran in 2007, and Arthur and Cousin since 2012. American food aid is said to be tied since it benefits its farmers directly. 
Let us remember, said former President Richard Nixon in 1968, that the main purpose of aid is not to help other nations, but to help ourselves. These images have become a symbol of American generosity. On each sack of flour or rice, the American flag and the emblem of USAID, the American Agency for International Development. Americans, American politicians, take pride in those pictures of grains of American rice and flour being delivered overseas to refugee camps, uh, keeping people alive. But this kind of aid is facing growing criticism from the U.S. development community. Almost all food aid donated by the U.S. government is bought from American farmers, a system designed in the 1950s during a time of huge surpluses. Now you have a situation where you don't have uh, surplus commodities in America. American grain prices are very high. It's very expensive to ship those on American ships, and it would be much more efficient and effective uh, to purchase those commodities on the world market. I think the vast majority of the development community sees the need for change. USAID did not respond to our requests for an interview. The agency pushed through a new rule a year ago allowing untied aid. But for food aid, the new rule doesn't apply and other organizations are crying foul. There are people in the U.S., there are interests in the U.S. who like the system the way it is now, the benefit from the system the way it is now, uh, and our constituents and political supporters of the system the way it is now. And that's largely the U.S. agriculture industry and the U.S. shipping industry. But we're at a point now where the inefficiencies in that are really no longer tenable. Under the Obama administration, American humanitarian policy is shifting towards the European model, but Congress still isn't convinced. A report from the OECD in 2006 estimated that tied aid adds 30 percent to costs, a claim that supports the European position. Brussels opted for untied aid, meaning European humanitarian projects don't benefit its farmers. Yet the European Commission's aid office is the world's leading humanitarian donor. Our annual budget uh, has been gradually creeping up in, in recent years. Um, it's gone in the past two years from uh, just under a billion euros per year to um, last year, which was set a new record for us. It, was, it, it ended up year-end 1.3 billion for humanitarian aid. We impose no conditions whatsoever uh, for giving our, our aid. Um, uh, as I said previously, the only criteria that, uh, that we apply is, is needs and access to vulnerable populations around the world. We, we respond to crises and uh, we, we expect nothing in return. Among those NGOs and agencies that have access to that funding, there's the WFP that received more than 220 million euros in untied aid in 2012. But despite claims the Commission expects nothing in return, every euro counts, especially in times of hardship, for European companies just like everyone else. As for France, it intervenes in around 20 countries with an annual budget of 35 million euros. In 2011, over half was spent on international organizations such as the WFP. For the foreign minister, tied aid is politically incorrect. Unlike other nations that in some sense export their surpluses through food aid, France does not use tied aid. The provision of supplies by local producers generates an income, resources for the producers themselves and, in a certain way, supports agricultural development in those countries. French policy shies away from using its food aid program as a leveraging tool. There's no discussion either on helping national companies. By its very nature, food aid from France is not an instrument to support French companies. So is feeding the hungry incompatible with the economic interests of donor countries? For the United States, the answer is no. For Europe and France, it's yes. And with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Beyond Business. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that if you want to watch this show again or a previous edition of the programme, you can head to our website, france24.com. Also, you can check out our iPhone, Android and Windows applications. Stay with us. We have more news coming your way soon.